I'm Gene Grant here at the table with this week's Line Opinion panelists. Governor Susana Martinez unveiled a comprehensive energy plan for the state this week. Her office says it's the first time that a plan like this has been created in more than 25 years. It includes plans for new infrastructure and using energy sources from both oil and gas and renewables. And Senator Griego, I'm going to ask you just an interesting question here. I'm just thinking about our panel today, and it's like, we've got some coal contracts ending here in about two years, big ones. Am I being too cynical when I say, is, is this energy plan is now on the table because we have a lot of coal contracts about to end, or is this just the right thing to do because it's been 25 years? What, what's your thought on this? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find the there there in the energy plan. It sounds like uh, kind of business as usual. I mean, mm -hmm. there's language in there about renewables, but really it's, it's more of the same. If anything, it's, it's tipping its hat to, uh, to, to more natural gas production. And I get it. There's a lot of jobs and a lot sure. of economic activity in those sectors. Mm -hmm. But rather than, uh, you know, I was looking at the Solar Industry uh, Association ranking of the top 10 states for solar. We are geographically, um, environmentally, should be the first or second producer in terms of, of capability for solar energy. We're 10th. Mm -hmm. States like New Jersey, Ouch. Massachusetts, Ouch. New York mm -hmm. are producing more uh, solar energy than what's There's no real uh, definite policy funding around promoting solar energy. Even our neighbors uh, in Texas, which, you know, not exactly, a, you know, a big petroleum state, a very conservative state, they're producing more wind energy. They, they made a decision to produce uh, more wind energy, and they're, they're the top producer of wind energy. Mm. So what we need is a truly balanced uh, energy policy. I don't think this policy does that at all. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the irony is, at the same time saying, you know, sort of wringing the hands, you know, we can't be so dependent uh, on the fluctuations in the oil and gas industry because it, you know, it's how we fund education and the, and the, and the state's too dependent on it. And, and um, at the same time, you should, there, there is no plan for really ramping up solar. Seriously, mm -hmm. there is no plan for really ramping up wind um, when those two things would reduce our reliance. It's sort of like, mm, let's let's try a little bit of everything and mm -hmm. keep doing what we're doing mm -hmm. and let's see how it goes. Interesting. Your initial thoughts, Merritt, Merritt Allen, when you read this? Well, I actually, I line. thought it, it mm -hmm. shows a way to get their renewables from here, which is not renew non-renewables. Okay. Um, it's, uh, it's a fact that... Um, our economy is stagnating right now because of oil and gas prices. Also, um, the coal producing areas are getting hit. BHP Billington's moving out of Farmington. Mm -hmm. That's about 200 jobs mm -hmm. uh, going. Do we have jobs the next six months in solar? No. Gotcha. Uh, but I, th I think Th we Does need the to be plan address that, in your view, does the plan address that crossover you're talking about? You know, until more renewables come online and can pick up more percentage of so. our need. I think so. I think so. It's because, uh, as I recall, it was, uh, mm -hmm. you know, calling for um, uh, studies to be done in New Mexico, inviting um, uh, 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 technology sure. firms to come and test sure. here because mm -hmm. we have a lot of land it's great for testing mm -hmm. um, it's a great way to use white sands which does use uh, does a lot of public private uh, type testing mm -hmm. we have the infrastructure here without a lot of investment so I sure. feel like it does get us there and it positions us um, as a leader in the industry without having to tap into a lot of resources which we don't have mm -hmm. interesting we Sophie we discussed this at this table many times yes. the cold turkey approach with renewables that's let it set a, uh, a plan with it with a date I dropped it. We're going to have this I percentage. To, to Merit's, to Merit's Can we get to that point, point Like, you know, if we've mm -hmm. gotten off the dime any of the many times since this, what, the 70s that, right. that this conversation first started nationally and, and any time since we've started discussing it at this table, if we had gotten off the, off the dime on solar and wind at any point, mm -hmm. that six-month gap wouldn't exist because we would have the technologies in place. We would have everything ready to go. Mm -hmm. And there has been nothing but delay, delay, delay. I think it's a really important thing to note that mm -hmm. the oil and gas industry appears to love this plan. And that is not an altruistic industry. That is an industry that is very much focused on their own bottom line and their own interests. Mm -hmm. You know, coal did not exactly bellyache about it either. Yeah. And here we see the renewables saying, well, it's a nice thought, but we're not not really getting what we need here. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, my sense is no, that this this is a, a great <clears throat> thing for oil and gas, a great thing for coal, coal, not so much for the people of New Mexico, not so much for, for renewables. And, you know, we're looking, as, as, as I think Eric said earlier, we're looking at a situation in which the value on the market of our oil and gas resources is dropping. We don't see that it's going to go up anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Why do we continually shore up this old, dirty technology. Right, Dan, some months ago, you fired a warning here at this table about you know oil going to $40 <laughs> or less a barrel. <coughs> Things that could be happening here in New Mexico because of that. 
That being said, does that not make the point that renewables should be on a hurry up process, that we should be pushing a little bit harder? Well, it depends, with these on, fluctuations. It depends on what you mean by a hurry up process. Okay. I mean, first of all, we don't have enough time to go into the whole problem with the issues, Gene, but mm -hmm. the first problem is, is everybody's right. We have an abundance of wind and solar, but we got no way to get the power to anywhere from where the wind and solar is. We got, the transmission is right. a huge problem, yeah. and, and that's not a problem you fix for $10 million. Okay. That's a multi-billion dollar problem. We don't have the money to do that, and the, and the private sector isn't running in to do that. Mm -hmm. The other problem is, is that the solar industry has been doing a lot of good. There's some great businesses in New Mexico mm -hmm. that are doing phenomenal, uh, that employ a lot of people, but if they don't have the huge tax subsidy, it's a difficult opportunity to get people to buy the energy to do it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done. We're moving closer. New Mexico's gonna be on the cutting edge, I think, once we figure out the battery situation with solar and wind and the storage capabilities, mm -hmm. that's gonna make us more more likely to be a player here. Why is New York and New Jersey a bigger player than us in places like solar? Right. Because they have the infrastructure. Right. They've got eight trillion people that are getting That's energy. Right. That's we right. don't have that. You go put a wind farm out in Dora, New Mexico, there's four power lines from Dora to wherever it needs to go to the co-op. Mm -hmm. They can't handle it. Mm -hmm. Now, to the dirty oil and gas stuff, I, you know, I think the, par the price of oil is gonna go back up. Mm -hmm. I think what you're gonna see with this whole debate with Iran, I think the deal's gonna be cut in DC that we're gonna start exporting our oil again. Once we start exporting oil and they make that change in Washington and we can start exporting to Mexico, it's gonna go through the roof. It's going to go through the roof. Gas has been sustaining. Gas has been doing much better. There's been a movement to do more with gas than there mm -hmm. has been. Mm -hmm. But I think at the end of the day, you know, there has to be a balance. Do we need to find a way to quit being so dependent on oil and gas and coal? I don't think anybody denies that. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is at what cost? Mm -hmm. Do we want to make ourselves so that we're paying, you know, $800 a day to heat and cool our homes? Or do we have to find a way to mirror that? I think the governor's plan mm -hmm. starts that transition. Mm -hmm. I do think it's the first governor in my lifetime that's taking a comprehensive look at this stuff and acknowledging right. that there has to be some renewable energy. 25 years is a long time. It's gonna, and I, so long, I think we're time. moving in the right direction. At least that's it right. gives us a baseline. Merritt, what do you make of the idea of uh, nuclear and, and the context of this is LANL has had some really interesting um, miniature nuclear reactors that are just fascinating when you, when you read about them and, and get told how they work and you can bury some of them underground. They can light up entire communities. Is there an opportunity there with nuclear for New Mexico as well? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, of course, the lead in um, what you want to call the portable or the miniature nuclear reactors comes from Virginia because that's what the preponderance of Navy nuclear officers retire to. Huh. But we have got a lot of good <laughs> Navy nukes in New Mexico, and they work for the energy. Let's labs. make them a deal. Get them Indeed, out here. and this is yeah. a lot nicer than Virginia. I moved Thank here from you. Virginia. I just Thank want to you. add on the infrastructure piece um, mm -hmm. that that. Um, we have had the, a, a deep conversation about building that infrastructure, and yes, it's expensive. And there are people interested, and to do that, to really show leadership on energy policy, we're gonna need uh, the governor to say, we wanna work with the feds, mm -hmm. we wanna work with the private sector mm -hmm. to try to get this built out. It's sort of this chicken and egg thing, you know, we're, we're never gonna get that energy online until we build authority, but until we say, gotcha. look, um, if we can muster the, the will to build major infrastructure, highways, all the other things we've been able to build as a, as a nation, and as, as, a, as a state even, mm -hmm. we build massive amounts of infrastructure with federal and private sector help, then if this, if this energy plan said, look, we are going to commit in the next 10 years to do whatever we can to build out the renewable energy infrastructure. That's it right. doesn't say that. It just says, well, um, we hope it happens. Well, we're going to try to happen. It's got to be part well, of the energy. But Gene, one of the biggest problems... Let me go to Merit. Let me go to, Merit, go to Merit first. Go ahead and react to that. Just uh, as, a, as, a, as a business person, I guess what mm -hmm. I really like about this plan is we're saying, okay, industry, okay, yeah. the next cylinder, whoever you are, come here and test. We've got great facilities. Right. Come here. We're not um, offering the, the massive tax breaks. We're not saying uh, you count more than others. We're not going to give you $30 million like we offered Tesla. Sure, sure. Come, come here and test, see how this works. I mean, uh, when you have, when you, the facilities we have with the labs and our ranges, mm -hmm. we have phenomenal test facilities. Firms will stay here. Mm -hmm. Firms will, will start uh, producing here. Mm -hmm. um, I think and it's Sandia a very- has a, Sandia has a dog in this as well. They, you know, they're, they're doing a lot of work on tr um, transmission line security, 
all that kind of stuff. There's a lot but of players wanna, that could be at the table. One of the, big problems, mm -hmm. one of the big problems with what Eric just said, and, and he's right, we need to mm -hmm. do more of this. But the very groups that Eric's talking about that are saying we want more solar, the minute we say we want to go put a power line through somewhere, they're the ones that protest. Oh, they're the ones that say no. Well, it's not they're just the they, ones it's, it's a lot of people well, that oh, protest. No, I thought so, we managed you know, to build yeah. infrastructure to support the oil and gas industry. We managed to do tax credits for the oil and gas industry. We we baby them like nobody's business. But when it comes to, to looking ahead to new investment, we say, oh, oh, that's sunk cost. We're not, you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna match what we've done. I don't, in the I don't past. think we say that. I think we, I think they're responsible for contributing a quarter to half of the budget every year. And Who so taxes. I think you, you but tell the, people, let's but do that. Declining. And at what point do we say, listen, this isn't about the oil and gas industry. This is about the people of New Mexico. And if we're not looking ahead to the next thing, that if that continues to decline, we're stuck. Mm -hmm. We made investments in infrastructure in the past, and I, and I really think it's cynical to say. Um, that those investments are too expensive now. Heck yeah, they were super expensive back then too. Mm -hmm. But it's something that we need to do for our community and for our country. And I, I just, I find it, I, I we, find did, it we did not make state investments in oil and gas pipelines around the state of New Mexico. Those were private sector investments where were done by the oil and gas companies. There's not a state-owned oil and gas pipeline in this state. They're all the oil oil tax 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 national tax highway system, land. the land. labs. No, those have nothing to do with the energy things. Those are things that Los the taxpayers say. Los Alamos has nothing to do with the energy No, industry? no, that's not what I'm telling you. You're saying the infrastructure deal. That's, those are federal dollars. So tell me, we're talking about oil and gas. Tell me what oil and gas state tax dollar was spent to build a pipeline. You're saying we should be using that money to build transmission lines, then switch stations, then power stations. I don't think, I, it's easy to come on and say, there's this flippant remark that we should be doing more of this. The substance is, we don't have the money to do it. And when we try to take the steps to do it, trying to do stuff in, in, in Otero Mesa, trying to bring things through, the very people that are on one day saying, we want renewable energy, the next day are showing up saying, but not in my backyard. There you go, that's all the time we have. Join us online to hear what this week's panelists, all fired up now, had to say about a new effort to rebrand the University of New Mexico. I'm Gene Grant. Next week, we'll bring you something different here on New Mexico in Focus. Tune in for a one-hour special on teen pregnancy in our state. We will feature the voices of young people and community leaders with different perspectives on how we should address young parenthood in our communities. You can find out more information on the issue on our website, NewMexicoInFocus.org. And as always, we appreciate your time and effort to stay informed and engaged, and we'll see you next week in Focus. Get a preview of what's coming up on the next New Mexico in Focus. It's easy. Sign up for our weekly email at NewMexicoInFocus.org.